Hi, I'm Steve Judge and I was the guest speaker at Darton Academy in early September for the year 10 and year 11s. Uh, hopefully you remember and hopefully you remember my journey and I said then that if you sent me some questions on social media or through your teachers, through the, the academy, then I would answer them and I have some questions. So before I go any further, I'm just going to play a video that is kind of a refresh of my journey. So just remind you, so uh, sit back and uh, just watch the video. So hopefully that refreshed your mind of my journey, going from wheelchair to world champion, and now the very important questions that you've sent in. So first one is, what are your weaknesses and how do you deal with them? Okay, so I'm not gonna go through all of my weaknesses, but yes, I, I am human, I have weaknesses. So what I do is when I have a weakness, first of all is admit it, find out what that is, and then put barriers in front of you. So what I'm, what I'm thinking straight away is chocolate biscuits, okay? So that's my weakness, I like chocolate biscuits. So what I will do is first of all, I will not buy them for the house. So there's no chocolate biscuits in the house, so then I can't eat them. Now, if they do creep into the house some way, maybe I'll buy them for my kids, then I'll put them away in the cupboard so I don't actually see them. Uh, and or almost making it difficult, putting a barrier between me and that weakness, that bad habit. Then what you've got to do as well is think about what you can do to replace that. So instead of biscuits, maybe fruit is good. So my fruit bowl is more prominent. It's on the edge of the, the worktop in the kitchen. So as I'm walking by, it's easy for me to grab an apple. It's more difficult for me to go and get a chocolate biscuit. So it's about putting those barriers in the way. Okay, next one is, um, was there any possibility of you having a prosthetic leg? Yes, um, it, there was and there still is. If they'd amputated my leg, then I would have had a prosthetic leg. And also now I still have the possibility, or I guess everybody does in a, in a twisted kind of a way, but I could, but it, they recommended that it's not a good idea because I've got 
I've not got enough good skin to wrap over the stub to make a good um, base for the prosthetic leg. So I could do, but I think it's very much about loving what you have rather than loving what you want. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy with what I've got. I know I get pain, I know it's restricted, and I know maybe even with a prosthetic leg, I might even run faster. But at the moment, I'm okay with what I've got. And so it's about thinking what you do want and, and, and living with that and working with what you have. You know, everybody's different. I always say, don't, don't compare to others. So think about what you can do rather than what you can't do. So I'm, I do, I'm quite happy with what I've got. Uh, if I go for the prosthetic leg, it, it might not be below the knee. I think that's what's going on inside my head. It might go really badly and it might go above the knee uh, amputation and that's really bad. I'd have to learn to, to walk all over again. So yes, that, that answers that question. Okay, next one. Where would you be now if you hadn't had your accident or if you'd given up on your dreams? Wow, uh, where would I be now if I hadn't had this accident? Um, who knows? I have absolutely no idea. Nobody knows where I would be. It's like a fork in my life in a way. And in a way, I love this message that I'm using quite a lot at the moment, which is we all have two lives. Our second one starts when we realise we only have one. That's quite deep, isn't it, really? What it means is sometimes you need that epiphany moment. You need that, that major thing that happens in your life. Somebody says something, something happens, it might be a traumatic event. For me, clearly it was my accident, and that emphasised everything that I'd done before the accident and what I wanted to achieve. So I wanted to, to move forward. So I don't know what my future would have held at that point, but I'm now grabbing onto life with both hands and making sure that it happens. Uh, same with my dreams. I want to have my dreams and I really want to achieve them, then I'm making them happen because I don't want to have any regrets. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, uh, two more questions. Uh, I don't have any goals or know what I want, so what advice can you give me? Right, you don't know what you want. That's, that's quite, quite a hard one to answer. On a, just on a video, probably need some one-to-one some -one coaching or something. Uh, if, if, if anybody wanted to set up a, an appointment with me, that's absolutely fine. Now to open, to answer it generically, um, so in the future you wanna be, you wanna be alive, okay? Let's, let's get that sorted, and you wanna be happy, okay? So what makes you happy? And, and go along those lines. Now, I know that seems a very uh, easy statement to make, but it is about living your life and to, with no regrets that makes you happy. So, somebody mentioned this, this quote to me, and see if I can remember it. It said, hell on earth is, at the end of your days, the person that you became meets the person that you could have become, okay? Now, how does that ring with you? Is, is that a good thing or a bad thing? For me, when I get to the end of my days and I meet the person I could have become, I see that as a negative person. Because I know that when I get to the end of my days, I would have achieved all the things that I set out to do. All the goals that I aspired to do, I would have achieved. I would have lived my life with no regrets. And I think that is the, the point that I'm getting to. Um, so the only thing that's left after that is the things that, is the negative stuff. So the person I could have become is the lazy one, the one that didn't take action, the one that didn't do anything, the one with no friends, no love, no money. That's the person that I could have become. But the person I became is the good one. How do you see that? How does that relate with you? So it's very much about living life with no regrets every day, week, year, all the time. Okay, last question. Um, how are you so resilient? Um, okay, another message is, you get knocked down six times, you pick yourself up seven. And again, easy statement to make. So how do I become resilient? Over and over and over again, using the resilience, picking yourself up, about the small things, about stubbing your toe, losing your keys, losing your mobile phone, just little things, using that resilience to, to go through the wave of resilience. And I talk about the wave of resilience in another keynote, which maybe I could share sometime, but it's very much about going through the change, the denial, coming down with anger and sharing that will bring you down to rock bottom. That's where a lot of people you know, say, oh, that's why I need the resilience. But it's, it's a lot of action before that point. At rock bottom, you're there for a, lot, for a while, depending on what action you've taken before. But then after that becomes acceptance. After that becomes taking action. And after that, moving up to the higher plane. Using that wave of resilience to become a winner over and over again helps you to build up, build up your resilience. And then you can move forward. When the big things really ha happen, then you can use that. So hopefully that's 
uh, helped you a little bit. Uh, thank you again for all the questions that I got. If you've got any more, then okay, send them through. Maybe I'll do another video. But again, if you wanted to contact me on social media, that's fine. LinkedIn, Facebook, or I'm even on Instagram at Steve Judge Gold. Then that's quite I'm quite okay to, to do that as well. Um, until then, I hope to see you next time uh, I do a presentation or workshop or session. Until then, stay well and keep working towards your goal. Thank you. Your gold, I should say.